Okay, fine. So here's my story of how I discovered Linux. It was around, I don't know, 2010 or something. I was just starting to study at university and basically everyone had Linux. I mean, everyone cool had Linux and it was all around me. We were using it in the computer room as well, where I learned to program C and C++. But me, I was kind of a die-hard Windows user. I always had Windows and just like, my father was also a programmer and he was really a big .NET fan and really liked Windows, maybe because he grew up with it and I kind of did too, like the first Windows I had was 3.11 and yeah, I just, I had no issues with that system. And so this was kind of my first contact, I, I think it was 2009, right? So that was my first contact with Linux after like the few times that I saw it in libraries. Cause it's kind of common for German libraries to use Linux because it's free and the state always wants to save money on stuff. And so I associated Linux with these Sunray stations that were always super slow and buggy and just look like crap. So <laughs> I had never thought about using Linux. I just knew that I didn't want Mac like ever because I had to work on a bunch of Macs and just jobs that I did on the side like in advertising and I was like why are people using these computers they don't even show you an error message before they crash and then afterwards they pretend like nothing happened it's just like a bad boyfriend no <laughs> and then at some point I just use Debian a lot because I spend a lot of long days and nights in that computer room just doing my homework. Like we had these four hour long theoretical physics problem solving classes on Friday afternoons. And after that, everyone would just go to the library and do more problems. Yeah, <laughs> that was basically my life because if you study physics or at least at the university I was at, it meant just basically giving up everything else, not having any spare time. I mean, maybe if you didn't work, but I just started spending a lot of time at the computer room and there we had a Debian and that is how I came into contact with that. But for some reason, I never really thought about installing a Linux on my own computer. It was just not that interesting to me and I did everything that I needed to do on my Windows and I used a lot of open source software already because I was cheap and I also used to tweak Windows in a way as in disable all the processes that spy on you as far as is possible. So I wasn't a complete noob or something. I was just not into Linux for some reason. And then I remember I went to a CCC Congress, which was in Berlin. And then I watched a bunch of talks there on forensics and yeah, just different types of hacking stuff and politics as well. It was pretty cool, interesting. I had never been to an event like that before. And I just remember that I was super embarrassed about running a Windows on my ThinkPad. I had a ThinkPad by that time already because, um, I don't know, I think it, it won a design prize and I was contemplating for a hot minute to buy an Apple computer, like a, a MacBook. I don't know, they weren't that great back then. And But everyone was just telling me how long they would last, like uh, seven hours of battery time and nothing else could do that. And then I thought like, well, uh, ThinkPad can do, I don't know, four to five hours good enough for me. Um, it's not like I'm going on a super long train ride and will not have a, a socket anywhere because we have those in trains, so it doesn't matter. So I had a ThinkPad, which was a step in the right direction, I guess. I had an X200 and I bought that on some notebooks cheaper for students page. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was running some Windows 7 on it. It was a bit slow. And then I went to this CCC event and all the people, they were sitting in the basement drinking something called Club Mate and uh, a lot of black coffee, I guess. And everyone was just sitting down there in the basement um, 
phones were forbidden like you weren't allowed to take pictures of anyone of course and I remember just sitting at my laptop using a VPN so no script kitty would like snatch my password which was still pretty easy back then and I don't know I was I was just sitting there looking at all the other people with their computers while I was writing some little program I don't know and everyone was using Linux like I mean maybe one in a hundred people would have a a MacBook, but most people, if you were glossing over the computers, you could just see, oh, there's Linux on that. And I remember, <laughs> it was so stupid, but I was so super embarrassed about my Windows that I downloaded some Windows theme that made it look lo more like a Linux. <laughs> and that, I think, that was the point when I realized, okay, maybe I should just install a Linux. And the other point that was just as stupid that sold me on it was when I was working at my university, we had MacBooks, like Mac minis and MacBooks for um, PhD students. So all the PhD students had to use Apple hardware and uh, ev everyone else too, like the whole chair just bought Macs for everyone at some point because they thought it would be less maintenance which turned out to be completely false and uh, I don't know just like they wanted to save money on administration and in the end they didn't and they looked like total idiots because what decent physicist works on a Mac that is a disgrace to the field but as I was working with these Mac minis myself which by the way went up in flames as soon as you opened more than five tabs in Firefox I found that you had this violet transparent terminal on Mac and I thought it was cool and I thought like oh this is the only cool thing Mac has actually to offer I like that I want a transparent terminal too and then I basically found out that you could do anything in the terminal and that you could make your terminal look like whatever you want you know the terminal emulator not the TDY but yeah then a bunch of times I was I would just hang out with other IT people, <laughs> computer science students, other physicists, and everyone would use Linux. And at some point I would just observe cool things you could do on Linux that you could not do on Windows, as in, for instance, uh, pressing Alt and the left mouse button and just move a window around everywhere or just multiple workspaces, which back in the day were a pain in the ass, like just the, the multi multiple de desktops that you would have in Windows. And I. I still think they are not good. So back then they were either non-existent or really bad or you had to use some weird software. So it was annoying. It was just all these little things that sold me on Linux and I just got some live stick with Ubuntu on it and installed it. It was not that hard and I figured okay I can work with this. It's not difficult to find out how, how stuff works in the terminal. I like the terminal better than all this GUI shit anyway so I'm just gonna continue to use the terminal and be happy and I don't know I tried everything in my 10 plus years of Linux. I tried all sorts of window managers, tile windows, window managers. At some point I entirely just did everything in the TTY using VI and or, or what do the cool kids, kids use now? Vim. Yeah, I did everything using that. E-links and other text-based browsers and my university also had awesome installed on the computer so used that as well. And then at some point I just graduated to Xubuntu because I really like the XFCE desktop and just the whole look and feel of the X sessions. I just like it better than GNOME. Also, at some point, this Unity shit came out on Ubuntu and I just really didn't want to use that. I, I found it ugly and this whole glossy, oh, you can use it on a tablet thing wasn't for me. So I basically wanted something that looked like the old GNOME shell. But I also wanted something that looked kind of 90s, kind of a little bit like my first Windows, like old and weird and vintage, I guess. And so, yeah, that was that was kind of part of the decisions. Like, I'm absolutely aware that a lot of aesthetics are involved in my Linux distro finding process. But I mean, at least I can say I never did much 
distro hopping because I just went straight from Ubuntu to Xubuntu. I had Ubuntu on some other old Slupu slow machine and I also had Mint on another slow machine that I left at the university because they didn't have laptops there. And so I brought my own, which was like super old. It was from my husband, he didn't need it anymore. So I, I brought that thing there because I wouldn't mind if someone spilled beer on it, right? So I didn't want to bring my precious little X200 with, with the docking station and everything. I didn't want to bring that to a place where it's possible that beer flows on keyboards. No. Like we had a fridge in the room where I wrote my bachelor's thesis and the fridge smelled horror awful. So yeah, and then at some point I was just like, okay, I think I want to use Arch Linux and I installed Arch Linux and I used it for like a year or two, but I really didn't like the repository. I was missing a lot of things. And at some point I was just thinking, hmm, why not go back to Ubuntu? But then I thought, hmm, any Ubuntu, like Subuntu, Ubuntu, whatever, they're all kind of slow and bloated. And I don't know, what can I do? What can I do? What's the next bigger branch? Where, where does this actually come from? Oh, Debian. Oh, okay, let's install Debian. And we've lived happily ever after. The end. Oh, well, here's my story of how it dicks, 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 dicks. Zubuntu or Zubuntu, right? How's it pronounced? 